Hello, I'm Gary Cleveland with Cleveland Helicopter Services in Plymouth, Indiana. And this will be another free video for you on my YouTube channel to help you with the helicopter ground school topics. Keep in mind my videos are unedited and I am by no means a artist, but I'll do my best to get my message across here. We will be talking about vortex ring state. Some people call it settling with power. It can also be described as a helicopter settling in its own downwash. Vortex ring state is when a helicopter develops vortices and begins to fall in its own dirty air and is no longer creating lift. The pilot may feel that the right thing to do is to lift up on the collective, but this is not going to fix the problem. Adding an angle of attack on a helicopter that is falling in a vortex ring state is not going to fix the problem. The problem has to be solved by moving the helicopter out of that dirty air. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Three things have to be present before the helicopter will get into vortex ring state. You have to be traveling less than ETL. You have to have a descent rate greater than 300 feet per minute on the VSI. The VSI is your vertical speed indicator in a helicopter or an airplane for that matter. 20 to 100 percent power. So if you're traveling less than ETL with a greater descent rate than 300 feet per minute, and you're using 20 to 100 percent of the power, then you can get into settling with power. If you take away any one of these three, you cannot get into settling with power. Let's, for example, talk about taking this one away. Let's say I want to practice and hovering auto rotation from 500 feet, so I have zero airspeed. So I've got this one. I roll the throttle down, push the collective down, I'm dropping straight down in an auto rotation. My VSI is probably close to 2,000 feet per minute. So I've got two of these, but I don't have the third one because I'm not using power. I'm in a auto rotation. Let's talk about taking this one away. Can I get into settling with power? I'm using 20 to 100 percent of the power. I'm traveling less than 16 to 24, but I don't have a greater descent rate than 300. In other words, I either have no descent rate or I have a descent rate less than 300. So I cannot get into settling with power. Let's take away this one. I'm using 20 to 100 percent of the power. Let's say I got a crazy descent rate. I'm coming in at uh, 1,500 uh, feet per minute, but I'm keeping plenty of speed in it. I'm not going less than ETL, so I cannot get into settling with power. There's some things that uh, put us at hazard for getting into settling with power. High gross weight, high density altitude, attempting to hover out of ground effect without precise control, we're going to talk about that in just a minute because that's how you're going to demonstrate it for your instructor, that's how you're going to demonstrate it for the examiner. 
attempting to hover above the hover ceiling. We'll talk about this when we do a lesson on pressure altitude, density altitude, and we go to the helicopter pilot operating handbook and we see if the helicopter can hover in and out of ground effect under a certain condition. We will learn that uh, there is a hover ceiling in and out of ground effect for every helicopter depending upon uh, the conditions, barometric pressure, temperature, altitude, and the weight of the helicopter. Attempting to hover above the hover ceiling could cause settling with power. Another thing that could cause settling with power would be steep power approach. On a steep powered approach, uh, possibly the pilot could uh, misinterpret the wind. The wind could change during the approach due to um, mechanical turbulence. The pilot needs to be on guard during steep powered approaches, uh, watching uh, that he does not get into settlement of power and be prepared to quickly recover should it happen. Helicopter Flying Handbook also says landing on a rooftop or a pad that's when it's not aligned with the wind. In this scenario, I think I would just go around and uh, deny the, the landing at that spot. Why uh, force yourself to land um, on a roof or a helipad when the wind is not right uh, and you're being forced to come in a certain way with a tailwind? That just doesn't make sense. So how do we recover from settling with power if we get into settling with power? For the instructor and for the examiner, you're going to get into it by going to a couple thousand feet and you're going to hover out of ground effect without precise control. In other words, you're going to bring it to zero airspeed with plenty of altitude with a tailwind. The aircraft will start to fall when you get uh, four, five, six, seven hundred on a vertical speed indicator. You got vibrations going on, uh, the controls are not responsive, sluggish then you're simply going to lower the collective a little bit, push forward on the cyclic a little bit and get some speed. The helicopter quickly recovers by uh, getting into clean air. Uh, pretty uneventful uh, to demonstrate this uh, in that manner. There's another method of recovery that uh, recovers the helicopter uh, with less loss of altitude. It's called the Bouchard method. So this method, we move the helicopter rapidly to the side. If you are flying a helicopter that is a counterclockwise rotating helicopter, meaning that the tail rotor is on the left thrusting to the right, and the helicopter uh, gets into settling with power at low altitude, you would actually push on the left pedal right cyclic and lift up on the collective. By pushing on the left pedal you will be adding tail rotor thrust to the right. You put the cyclic to the right tilting the rotor system to the right and you lift up on the collective. The helicopter recovers um, after losing very little altitude and this method uh, would be the method of choice for somebody operating uh, low to the ground where the traditional recovery would not um, allow you to uh, lower collective sum and get forward speed. Now if you were operating a helicopter with a clockwise rotating system such as a rotorway or a cabri, it would be just the uh, opposite. You would actually push on the right pedal and go left cyclic and lift up on the collective.
to move the helicopter over into clean air. So this has been a, a review or a lesson on uh, Vortex Ring State. If you liked the video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. You'll get notified when we have more videos coming out. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.